Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now this tutorial we'll be looking at both Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, both by Serif. And the subject of the video will be looking at the snapping tool, the snapping manager, and it works pretty much the same in both of those programs. This is, came as a response to a, a video I had just recently finished, which was a, quite a short video, because on a video before that I'd been moving some boxes around and some measurements and ca came up on screen and some lines and somebody asked me why were they appearing, because they weren't appearing on their version of Affinity Photo, I think it was. So I made that video to explain that it was because I had snapping turned on and they didn't. And then other people then sort of commented about, well, you know, what are the snapping um, guides and how do you use them and what have you. So this is going to be look uh, a more a slightly more in-depth look at looking at the snapping and snapping to guides and what have you. Um, I'm going to do it mainly in Affinity Designer rather than Affinity Photo because I feel that you would use them more in Affinity Designer because 9 times out of 10 in if you have a photo to edit you're just going to be changing colours and tones and and things like that you're not not so much got objects that you're going to want to align and snap to which you will do more often than not in Affinity Designer so I will do most of it in Affinity Designer but as long as you are aware that it pretty much will work the same in Affinity, Affinity Photo. Now the snapping tool is up here and it is this magnet icon and if you, at the moment it is turned on if I click on the magnet icon it will then be turned off and the little arrow next to it if you click on that it opens up the snapping manager you can also get to the snapping manager from the view menu coming down to snapping manager and it opens up that way as well now to prove that this works in it's the same in affinity photo I will go to that program up here the same sort of magnet icon and here I've done a screen grab of affinity designers snapping manager so you can compare the two and as you can see they are exactly the same options even up to this top bit here where you've got candidates now I really do not understand what the candidates bit part of this is I never alter it so if you want to know more about that you would have to read the help file or just try it out but you, it's got something about immediate layers, intermediate layers, and children and all layers there's also a preset section here, drop down menu which again I've never touched with and I really don't know what happens if you do so this top part here in both programs I never alter sometimes I alter as you can see I've got more I think I've got more ticks in Affinity Photo than I do have in Affinity Designer but I'm going to make them the same when I go back to Affinity Designer which I'm going to do now and then I'll just come here and I will put in um, snap to spread which I must admit I don't really know too much what that means but and then put a hook in to include bounding boxes and I will leave it at that for now so I'll just close that and so I needed to have a, a document open to show that working but I will just quickly shut this down and I'll start another new one and I want to do it this way because I want to show you that when I start a new one I put in include margins it's just an A4 document and I'm setting the document units to an inch but you can set them to whichever you want it works in all the different various like pixels or centimeters so I'm setting it to an inch and I'll just click okay 
So that include margins is this blue line around here, which when I do a document I pretty much do include um, because I know modern printers are quite good now at printing right up to the edge but I'm from the old school where the printers you couldn't really go that close to the edge so I, I like to have a guideline which isn't printed when you do the end document but I try not to go too much outside of this blue guide uh, line so I know that everything I see will be in the printed area like I said modern printers are a bit better nowadays but I still sort of stick to my old ways of working but also this is something that objects will snap to so what I need to do is just make a pixel layer and I'm just going to quickly fill that with a colour so this um oh, was it? I keep expecting like in um affinity photo a paint pot but it's not it's in affinity design it's this weird icon um so I I pick a colour and just make it that blue just so I can see the thing I'm going to draw out um Although I can't see that guideline, if I put the cursor near the edge, you can. See, this is the snapping tool in w sort of working. It is telling me where those guidelines are. So the red ones are the horizontal, and the green ones are the vertical. So when I make an object, I can move it and it will that line will appear let me know where the margin is so let me draw a square and it is going to be I'll just make it like that come to the move tool and then as I come close to the margin line that as you can see that green line so turns up so I know that that is close to there and that is close to the top now if I just hide this layer here so you come back to the margin line now this is why the icon being a magnet is quite a good thing because if I move this as slow as I can towards this sideline at some point the snapping will sort of grab hold of the icon, uh, the square that I've made and drag it to the line now I I was moving slowly there and hopefully you, you could see that it sort of got hold of it and dragged it to the line and I had no control over that so that way you are certain that it is lined up to where I want it so that is um, the option here which is snap to margin which I have ticked so the next one would be um, where is it Sh oh snap to guides that's it now the guidelines are ones that you can drag on either from you have to have the rulers on the screen but you can you can either drag a guideline out horizontally or vertically. So again, if I select this and I click and move it, it should, as I come slowly towards this guideline, suddenly, there you go, it just snapped into position on that guideline. And I'll do the same with this one here, move it down slowly and then it just grabs it and drags it to the line so if you had some text on here for example and you wanted to line up the box immediately to the text you could drag a guideline out to where the text starts and then you could then align all the objects underneath that you can get rid of the guidelines just by dragging them back to the rulers 
Right. The next one you have here is like snap to grid. Now you can turn the grid on, come to the view menu and show grids. Now unfortunately by default I think the grids are yellow. You can probably hardly see that at all. They are on the screen. But what I'll do is I'll come to view and come to the grids and access manager. And as you can see here, the colours are yellow. Right. It's easy enough to change the colours. At the moment they are linked, so whatever colour you make one, you make both. But you can click on that link to sort of unlink it so you can have one say red and the other one blue but I will leave them being the same colour and I will just pick a, a darker and let's come down to black almost so they are more visible on screen and I'll just close that now these will all be one inch squares so if I move this again slowly towards one of the grid lines when it gets close to it it will grab it and snap it into position and also being in grids you can resize so that they are all one inch in size and then you move it around it will then line up and snap to the guidelines, uh, the grid lines I should say. So there are three different ways that you can snap an object to either the margins or guideline or in this case a grid. So I'll what I'll just quickly do here, I will just extend that to a second, uh, two inches across, one inch depth. I will hold down the control key and drag out a copy of this and this is the point where like I was saying at the beginning where the, the other video I made it was explaining about these lines and figures that were turning up because if I bring this back here you can see hopefully you can see the figures in between and as I get to the grid line that is now one inch away from that one. So I could, if I just draw another box here. Now, again, when I'm drawing, um, moving the cursor around, even though I'm, hopefully you can see, if I'm still slightly away from the line, the actual dot is clinging to the line as I'm moving around. Again, it's red for horizontal lines, green for vertical lines. I hope you can see that all. Um, you, know, you, don't, you don't necessarily have to be right on the line for it to actually start drawing from the line. Saying that, it didn't do it. Typical. You press Ctrl and Z a couple of times. And then i draw out a, a bigger box there. So this is four inches by two inches depth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the text tool, uh, the frame text. And again, I will draw out a frame text the same size, come to text and then insert filler text. So, as you can see, the text box is also, you know, it's snapped to the guidelines. And I can draw, let's, let's go for artistic text here. And what should I put in? I'll put in, no, I don't know. Let's try fish. And then... I need to move tall and I'll just 
make it the same width but if I move this around hopefully you can now see that underneath the word fish there's a red line and that is the center point of that square and again if I come down the top is now the center point and if I move this up you can then make sure that that is centered pretty much in the middle of that box because of the red line that appeared in it so if I then come to this other box and let's go back to doing a text box and then add in some filler text and come to move again you can one you've got the figures turning up in between the two boxes to show you the distance it is from the original box but you ha have the red line in the middle that tells you where the center point is so the guidelines are there one to help you position things but also when you draw out new boxes or what have you it makes sure that things are aligned so if I just get rid of the grid and then come off away from there and then I could bring back the background so no matter what you do you can use the snapping manager to help you align things or get them all in the same place you know be it height or depth or what have you I'm sure that uh, hopefully this is a lot more coherent than it's sounding in my head but that is pretty much how I understand the snapping manager to work in both affinity photo and affinity designer and I hope that does answer some of your questions although I'm sure it probably leaving you with more questions than I've actually answered but thank you for watching and goodbye